happening at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center? We just kicked off the annual AMSIS educational meeting. Okay. We are now in the exhibit hall following the plenary session that uh, occurred this morning. And I'm walking around looking at the hundred and some exhibitors that are showing everything from wound dressing to uh, museum artifacts. Uh, it's a wonderful show. All right, and what all is going to be happening between plenaries and sessions this week at the exhibit? We have a full week. Um, we just had a plenary session on the 50th anniversary of the original Surgeon General's report on smoking. Tomorrow we're going to have the first anniversary of the Defense Health Agency that's been working for the last year to really recreate the structure of military medicine. We have three important sessions on Ebola, uh, two of them being updates from uh, public health service and DOD teams who went to West Africa. Uh, we have tracks on global health, TBI, psychological health, uh, operational medicine. Frankly, there's something for everybody. If you have a medical specialty, we got a track for you. Great. And I know there was some rumor about a pay it forward piece that AMSIS is working on for recruiting new oh. members. Can you tell us a little bit oh, more, more about than, that? More than a rumor. I asked for new members. AMSIS is seeking new members. Uh, to strengthen our organization so that we can continue doing this kind of thing far into the future. And what I reminded the audience was that we all owe part of our success to those mentors and guides and coaches and, and, and people who have pushed us through and allowed us to be and made us successful. And I offered to have AMSIS help recognize new members uh, to allow them to reward and thank somebody who helped them in their career with an AMSIS coin and a note from AMSIS congratulating them uh, for, for their efforts. That sounds great. Is there anything that AMSIS is looking to do overall in the next 5, 10, 50 years? AMSIS is a platform for federal health. We allow federal health practitioners of all stripes from all agencies to get together, to talk, to understand one another, to share scientific advances through our meetings. And we publish the journal Military Medicine once a month. I've been doing so since 1891. That's before the Spanish-American War. Uh, that's not only the custodian of our medical history, but is the place where military and VA medical history is being written today for the future. So we are, we are the voice and the platform for military medicine, VA medicine, public health service medicine, and any other federal health or international actor medical organization with that kind of mission. Great. Any last pieces you want to add? This meeting is unique in its value for medical professionals to learn one another. There's a faddish thought that all communication can be email or online or telemedicine, and it can't. People need to know one another and, and know one another's organizations to be able to have the cooperative efforts that we expect from organizations now. And that's inter-organizationally as well as internationally. And AMSA is very proud to provide the platform, a, a unique, unparalleled platform. There's a French three-star general standing right behind you watching our interview right now uh, that nobody else does. Well, thank you so much, Vice Admiral Cowan. We appreciate your time. You bet.